In the last video, we have looked at planes and we also looked at a rotating planes and the differences between degrees and radians. Just um, as a reminder, in Grasshopper, we almost always use radians. So whenever you want to input any kind of rotation or an angle um, as degrees, you need to um, uh, convert it to radians with the radians component. Um, and then after we've rotated this um, uh, plane in three dimensions, we used it as our um, basis for creating a circle. And of course, the circle inherits all of the uh, rotations that we've given the plane that is used as its input. In this video, I will um, go into further detail and give some more examples of how uh, planes will be useful and can be useful when uh, creating and modifying geometry. So I will delete all of the components except for our construct points. Um, so this is just the construct point component and three number sliders that go from uh, 0 to 100. If you uh, don't have them in your definition, quickly go ahead and uh, recreate them. And now I want to create a sphere. And the sphere will be a surface and we will uh, find the component to create a sphere on our, um, yeah, on the, in the surface tab under the primitive section. And here we have our um, sphere component. You can also, of course, always um, simply type sphere. Um, this also has a base input, and this base input expects a plane. Um, however, um, one thing that is quite nice about Grasshopper is sometimes we don't need to necessarily define um, or convert, in this case, a point to a plane to use as an input. We can simply go from the point to the, um, uh, to the base input, and Grasshopper will basically automatically convert our point into a plane. Of course, this only um, creates a flat plane. So our um, the plane that this uh, that this uh, creates is basically just a um, yeah an x y plane um, at this point location. So what is happening if I directly put our point into a plane input? In this case, it's called base, but it's a plane input. Um, it gets the point gets used as an origin for, to an x y plane, and this is then um, used as the input to our sphere. Um, if that was too abstract, uh, don't worry. You simply need to know that sometimes you can also use. You don't necessarily need to use the specific um, type of input. You can uh, Grasshopper can sometimes uh, translate between different kinds of geometry, and points can be trans uh, converted to planes automatically. So. Now that we have this sphere, I will also um, change its radius and create a number slider between um, 0 and uh, 150. And just to create a, a sphere that is uh, just a bit bigger. And now that we've created uh, this sphere, um, I want to create some points on the sphere. Um, there's multiple ways of doing this, but I will use a, a very simple way that basically creates yeah, random or pseudo-random points on um, our sphere, and that is the populate geometry component that you can also find under the vector tab. And here under uh, the grid section, you can find the populate geometry component. And our sphere is our geometry input. And we will set the count. We will simply uh, copy our number slider from the sphere. And we will set the count to something a bit lower. Maybe let's create yeah, 14, 15 points. So what this does is it creates, uh, it takes this geometry and simply creates yeah, this random amount of uh, uh, points on the sphere. And our output is a list of points. We haven't gone into um, the difference between lists, trees, and whatnot, but right now what is new is, is just that instead of having one piece of geometry um, as our output, we have a list of um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of points as our output. And when we use this as an input to a different component, um, the same thing will be done for each of these points. So 
now I will basically, uh, I basically want to create another sphere at each location. So at each of these points, I want to create another um, sphere. So I will copy the sphere and the radius number slider. Command Z, Command uh, V. Um, reduce the radius, and then I want to, um, uh, 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 instead of having the, the base plane that we had before, I will use these points as my base. And now you can see we created these yeah, 14 different points that are all, um, yeah, whose, the, the center of which is, are all on the surface of this um, sphere, um, especially at these, exactly at these points that we created with the populate geometry um, component. So this already like kind of hints at uh, the, the power of grasshopper. So we don't need to, to go and, and create uh, something multiple times. We can always um, uh, create lists of, of geometries and then do the same thing again and again without having to, to uh, create another sphere and, and basically copying and pasting uh, this uh, 20 times. We can simply uh, define how much we want, populate the geometry, and then um, create geometry at each of these locations. Now, instead of having these um, points, uh, these spheres at each of the points on the sphere, I want there to be um, cylinders at each point um, that we have created. And so instead of using the sphere component right here, I can use the cylinder component. And we will, always, uh, we will also find this cylinder component um, in the primitive section of our surface tab. And I will use the same radius. I will simply copy my uh, radius slider for the radius and also for the, for the length. And our base will be the um, population, the points that we've just created. And now we also have uh, created these, um, these uh, cylinders at each of these points. However, you can see they are just, yeah, since we only gave a point as our input, the cylinders are simply created on the XY plane that is created from each of these points. So all of them basically yeah, um, are directed upwards. But this is probably not what we want when we uh, want to create geometry on a sphere. Instead, we want to, of course, have it um, uh, have all the geometry um, directed yeah, in, in the same uh, in the in the direction of the surface of the sphere. So in order to do that, we need to um, uh, get a bit more complex, and I will show that right now. So um, instead of simply having these points on our sphere, we need to have more information about them. And what we need is uh, to get to planes that also show the orientation at each point of the surface on the sphere. And in order to do that, we will use the um, BREP closest point component. You can find this up here under the surface tab in the analysis section. And there we have the BREP closest point component. And we will use our first sphere, so the, the, um, the big sphere that we have created, as our BREP input. And then we use the population, the points that we've created with populate geometry, as our point input. And there's no specific um, um, a preview that we can see right now. However, we now have another piece of information and that is a normal. And a normal is a vector. Um, I will quickly visualize this vector. Um, you don't need to do this, but I will just do this um, as a, just to show you what is, what is done. You can use the vector display component under display and then all the way to the right, vector display. The point is our anchor and our normal is the uh, vector. And here you can see that we now have these um, arrows that basically point in the direction of the, yeah, of our surface. And that, um, 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 yeah, that instead of just having our points, just, just having the locations, we also have the direction um, in which the, the surface is oriented at these locations. And now, from this um, additional information, from this normal vector, we can create planes again. So we'll go back into our uh, vector component, uh, vector section. And here we have a component that is called 
plane normal. And with this one, we can create a plane that uses that normal vector as its z-axis. So wherever this vector points, the plane is basically uh, perpendicular to that, um, to that vector. And I will place it on the canvas and use the point as the origin and the normal as my z-axis. And now you can already see we're basically, yeah, we've, we've wrapped these, these planes with their directions um, around this sphere. And if I now use these planes as my input to the, to the uh, cylinder creation, then we can see that our cylinders are also um, oriented around the sphere in, such, uh, in, the, in the way that we would expect um, when we talk about uh, uh, basically distributing cylinders on the surface of a sphere. And this again shows why planes are so important. If we only have the points, if we only have the locations, we don't have enough information to, um, to, to set the orientation of a piece of geometry. But if we also have a direction, in this case a normal, and create planes from that, then we can use that as our input. And this is then um, how we can create complex geometry and, in this case, um, distribute a geometry on, on the surface um, of, a, of another geometry and direct it or point it in, such a, in, in the direction of the um, 